everybody welcome back to my channel your girl is back it has been four weeks since i had my baby he will officially be a month tomorrow tomorrow is november 8th i can't believe it's been a month since i had this baby it seemed like i waited this whole long time for this baby to come and now he's already a month and i'm just like where's my little baby going where is my little baby going so today I am going to be talking about just, I guess my labor and delivery story. We'll start there. That's a good place to start, right? Yeah. So today we'll be talking about my labor and delivery story. It's not like, oh, it was very, it was a chill labor and delivery compared to most. So get you a snack, get you something to drink, and let's hop into it, okay? Okay. So... Originally, I was supposed to get induced because we we liked our due date. But most importantly, my doctor, my lovely OBGYN, was moving back to Texas. And um, hospital rules was she wasn't going to be able to deliver my baby because she wouldn't be able to do my six-week, you know, post-op appointment. And I was devastated. But we found out she worked her magic. And we found out that she could deliver us. So I'm like, look, whatever we got to do for this lady to deliver our baby, we're going to do. Went to the hospital October 7th at 5 p.m. Everything was smooth, but no, let me back up. Earlier that day, me and my mom went walking on the beach because we're like, you know, let's see if we can, you know, jumpstart this on our own. I didn't really want to be induced, but I really... Sorry, I'm looking at my baby. He's napping. But I really wanted my doctor to deliver my baby because I didn't know the other doctor, even though I heard really good things about her. I have been with this lady since I was eight weeks pregnant. I don't want another doctor. I want a doc I want my doctor. And I'm sure if you're a mom out there, you understand what it's like when you can't deliver with your doctor. It's anxiety of times a bajillion. And I'm a first time mom and so I just wanted to be as comfortable as possible. As possible. So, we went to the beach and I started walking. You know, I was tired because I was big. I inserted a picture of what I looked like on that day. But, yeah. So, we started walking. I came back home. And all of a sudden, I felt I used the bathroom. And then I was getting on the walk up. But then it felt like, you know, more was still coming. And so, I had like a little trickle. Like, my water kind of broke. Just a little just a little like that it wasn't a whole lot and I was like oh my god uh -huh. you know I was like getting ready to start panicking but like the whole day the whole day like I was cool calm and collected I was like okay yeah I'm gonna have a baby today mm -hmm, yeah you know I wasn't worried at all I was so chill it wasn't until we got to the hospital and the lady was asking me all these questions and telling me okay here's the rope get his rope put this on this explain it and that's when it set in and I was so scared so scared if you watched the labor and delivery video like I legit was like I don't know how how I about to plan to get this baby out but I was scared <laughs> I was scared so I get dressed, we do all that, and then my doctor comes and they do, they, she inserts like this little string, like strip thing, and it's called Cervidil, and what it's supposed to do is it's just supposed to soften your cervix, so at this point, I wasn't induced, they were just trying to get me to have like some cramp, you know, like some cramps to soften the cervix, so when we get to the morning time, because you have to have it in for 12 hours, so they put it in at 6, so then at 6 a.m., they were going to come take it out, and um, then... You know, then they were going to give me the Pitocin to speed up, you know, to induce me then. Um, let me tell y'all. Because my baby was so low, she had to go up and around my baby's head to get to my cervix. That was the most painful. Like, I literally saw stars. That was the most painfulest thing. I was like, oh my God. If this is, like, then that I really got scared. Because I was like that hurt 
looked at her and anybody who knows like anybody who's had somebody like him y'all know i can't i can't i can't describe it unless you like know what it's like to have somebody paying in your cervix like whole hand it literally felt like she was like this far inside of me my mama said that's what it looked like so it is mm -mm. so okay so after she did that she was like are you in any pain she's like oh you're having some light contraction oh look at you so i was contracting but because i have a high pain tolerance i um i didn't really know i was contracting like that but i was and so she was like oh don't worry i'm getting ready to change that so she was like yeah i just want some mild cramping the way she explained it to me, this is how I heard it in my head. I'm going to have some mild cramping, and then at 6 a.m., that's when the real contractions are going to start. That's what was going on in my mind. That's that's what I was thinking, like, the whole time. Like, okay, they're going to be baby contractions, and then I'm going to get the big, the real contractions at 6 a.m. That was not the truth, y'all. I was literally, I was laboring. Like, I was laboring for real. So, so like I said, 6 o'clock, she put in the server deal. By like 6 30 boom contractions they started coming off like ooh, okay the party has started you know i'm like okay yeah this is starting to feel like cramps like i'm remembering what cramps feel like and then they just got stronger and they just got stronger and they got stronger and i was like dang if these are supposed to be baby cramps i don't think i'm gonna make it you know six when they really crank it up because everybody told me that when they give you that pitocin those cramps are they're a whole nother story whole nother story so i had no idea that i was in like i was literally contra i was contracted on my own i was in labor my contractions were like on top of each other literally like the minute i started the contraction i would be in it and then as i'm leaving out of the contraction another contraction would be right on top of it so it's like i could not catch my breath i did not have a moment where i was like able to breathe or like sleep like i couldn't sleep through the contractions or nothing because they literally was like one after the other and i don't it's not unbearable contractions are not unbearable they just hurt and i can't even describe the hurt to you it, it literally feel like somebody I think was crushing me. Like, crushing me. That's, yeah. I felt like I was being crushed. And, like, I was, like, leaning over, holding onto the rail like that. And, like, I'm, if you know me, I struggle with breathing. So, that was the, not, like, respiratory issues. I just don't know how to do breathing techniques. Okay, so, the lady, she came in, she was showing me, you know, I told her I wanted to go as long as I can without the epidural. So she was showing me breathing techniques that, you know, would get me to that point. And, yeah, I was really struggling. But I got it. I got it eventually. But my mom, she was great. She, my mom is so calm. And she was really helping me. And she was really helping me to remember my breathing techniques. Because when those contractions really hit, mm -mm, you just want to just holler. You do. You just want to holler. So from the moment she put that in till about i think i went till four yeah because i had him at 706 so i went until four mom was like you know you can get the epidural you really can get the epidural like it's like and so that's why in my mind i was like it didn't dawn on me to ask for the epidural because i didn't think that i was really in labor but i was and so okay it had got to that point where I was just like, I can't do it. Like I was, I remember telling her, I was like, I can't do it anymore. I was like, I can't do this. You, y'all have to get this baby out of me like now. I can't. I can't do it. I can't, like I can't do it. And so I'm waking up this day. I'm like Dante, you need to tell them that I need the epidural like now. Like I need it like right now. I can't. I can't go anymore. Like. Mm -mm. So he goes and he tells them, and they're like, okay, the doctor's on the way. And so I'm like, is he on the way, like, another part of the hospital, or is he coming from home? And so I was like, Dante, you got to go ask him. Like, at this point, I'm, like, screaming. Like, I'm like, you need to go and get him. Like, you need to go find him. And so he goes out the room, and I remember he's like, hey, um, is the doctor, 
he was like, hey, is the doctor on the way, like, from home, or is, like, another part of the hospital? And, he was, and I remember hearing the nurse clearly say, oh, no, he's from home. And I just, like, start crying. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't do this. Like, he needs to come now. I was like, I can't. He needs to come now. I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So, they finally... He finally comes. It doesn't take him that long after I made that big old spectacle. It doesn't take him that long to get here. But the one thing I want to know, and I think that the hospital need to do better about this, don't give women that's in labor no paperwork about an epidural. Like, have me fill that out in the very beginning, not when I'm, like, on my con having contractions, because I was having contractions as he was doing it. Like, you know, my back, giving me the needle, like, I'm having contractions now, and you want me to sign papers, and you want me to, I don't care what the papers say, you just do what you do, and then after I'm done, you know, then we can talk, but he was having full conversations with me, and I was like, I'm dying, like, I'm dying, like, I was in so much pain, my water really broke, like, I remember it, it was like, like, how everybody say, like, a gush, like, it felt like a balloon popped, and I was like, I told my mom, I was like, my water broke. Like seriously, my water is broke. And they came and they was like, they thought I was playing. And they like, it was the colors. I was like, oh yeah, her water has really, her water really broke. So after they did the epidural, I was like, really out of it. I was really out of it, but I was able to sleep. So from from four until about six fifty, six is that's when they came and they um. They took the cervidale out, and they checked my cervix, and I was nine. So, let me back up. Before I got the epidural, I was at three centimeters. So, from 6 p.m., yeah, from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., I had got to three centimeters. From 4 to 6, I had jumped to nine. From 4 to 6, I jumped to nine centimeters. And so, they was like, oh, my God, we got to call your doctor because this baby is ready he's here like right there and so they call my doctor and they you know we it's go time at this point and so my doctor comes in and she's so cool like she's so like i promise i would recommend her a bajillion times over when i have another baby i'm going to texas i'm going to find her she's gonna be my doctor again but she was just so cool she was like okay this is what we're gonna do you, when I say push, you're going to push. When I say don't push, don't push. You're not going to scream. You're just going to breathe. And we're just going to get this baby out. And I'm like, okay. And, like, I think that it's so important when you have somebody that's confident in what they're doing. And they believe in you. And so it makes you feel like I can do this. Like, it was not one doubt in my mind that I could not push this baby out. That I couldn't have this baby. I fully trusted her because... She, I believe that I could do it because she believes so much in me. And so they pulling the stirrups back. And let me tell you, those stirrups, they came like up to here. And so I'm looking like, who, who, who's in the put They like all the way in there. That's to my chin. Like, but, you know, they did it. Because at this point, I'm numb. I can't do anything. I can't lift anything. So she comes in. And at this point, like I said, they put my legs in the stirrups. Is that what they call? Yeah, the stirrup thingy. So I'm like up here with my knees. Baby Dante's dad, he's over there. He done brushed his teeth. He done brushed his hair. He looking all good for the labor and delivery. I'm numbed up, looking a hot mess. But he picture ready. And so, you know, he's on one side. I got my leg and my mom. She was somewhere. I don't remember where she was. I know she was behind me. I don't know if she had a leg or not. But I know she was, you know, she was right there. And so, my doctor was like, all right, here comes the contractions. We're getting ready to, when I say push, you're going to push. And she's like, I want you to push with all of your might and push down. Now, it's it's so crazy because you think push, you think about it like you're going to the bathroom, right? But it's like your body knows the type of push that it needs to do to get the baby out. And I thought that that was just like so phenomenal because you're numb. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're numb. So, it's not like you're doing anything per se. Your body is literally pushing this baby out. You know? So, she's like, all right, let's go. And she's like, push down. So, I'm pushing. I mean, I'm giving it to them. I'm like, I'm the type of person where if you tell me the end result is going to depend on me, I'm going to do whatever I can to get us to that end result fast. So, I'm going to push like I need to push. I'm going to breathe like I need to push. Like, in the moment, I'm I'm your girl. I'm a planner, but I am definitely one of those people that 
it can act under pressure. And so I did two, I remember I did two pushes and she was like, okay, wait a minute. And we was waiting on the contraction. The next contraction, she was like, oh my God, dude. You making noises. But I was like, okay. And so then I remember on that last push, she was like, she was like, oh my God, look down. And I looked and before I knew it, she was throwing that baby on me. And I remember the first things that I said when she put that baby on me was, oh my God, he's so big. <laughs> he was the big, like he was the biggest baby ever. He was the biggest baby. And then the next thing I said was, oh my God, you have so much hair. He was, he's furry. Like he had full of hair, body hairy. Like he is furry. He's a little bear, a wolf. That's what I said. He was a wolf. And I just couldn't believe it. He's finally here. Three pushes. 7 on 6 a.m. And our baby's here. And he was 8 pounds, 13 ounces, 21 inches long. And I remember asking when they took the baby away. I remember asking them, how much does he weigh? Because she kept telling me he was going to be like high 7s. I knew this baby was 8 pounds. She was like 8 pounds. 13 ounces. She was like, but the way you push that baby out, I would have never known he was eight pounds. I was like, champ. I'm a champ. So every time I think about I can't do something or something's gonna hurt, I'm like, girl, you push the eight pound baby out. You okay? <laughs> and so his dad cut the umbilical cord and it was just the happiest moment of my life that my baby was finally here and if you see the labor like i said watch the labor and delivery video i'm gonna put it up in the card so you can watch it because it just was amazing it really was amazing um i did tear i did tear but i only had to get one stitch it was only a, a very small tear and the reason why i tore is because he came out like this with an arm out like he was like ripped to go you know so i did tear um what else and that was about it it was very it was really the whole process was really fast like the whole the whole labor and delivery process was really fast it was a whole lot faster than i thought it would be um I'm just thankful because I hear a lot of people say, you come to death. Like, you and death, you looking at death down the barrel, basically, when it comes to delivering a baby. And I believe that. Like, it's just amazing what our bodies can do. When they put that baby on me, I just could not believe all of that was inside of me. I couldn't believe that. So yeah, um, what else? I'm breastfeeding at first. At first I didn't know it was touch and go because it it really hurt. It really hurt. And like my doctor said, this is the most action that your nipples going to get ever. And she ain't lying because she ain't lying. It was it was rough at first because he only wanted to take from one side. So this side cracked. I have to talk, we'll talk about a whole other breastfeeding video later. But um, and then I finally was able to get him to latch on this side. Um, but we stayed in the hospital three days. The reason being why we stayed three days instead of the two, we could have went home too. But baby Dante had jaundice and it was extremely high. Like he was like orange. He was orange and his eyes were yellow. Um, he did, but but he had busted two blood vessels like in each eye when he came when he came out because it was so fast and the pressure just he did not sit in the birth canal, he just shot out. And so we had to stay there because he had to get his Billy Rubin tested. He had to get a lot of tests concerning that. But other than that, the kid was perfect. Well, even with the jaundice, the kid was perfect. You know what I'm saying? But, so we stayed three days in the hospital, um, and then we came home, and that was it. I make another video talking about my recovery process and items that I use to help with the recovery process, but like I said, y'all, my labor and delivery 
was really chill. Like it was, it was, I'm thankful. It wasn't traumatic or anything like that. So, I feel like I left out a lot, but I feel like for the most part, y'all, you know, you got what I'm trying to say. So yeah, stay tuned for the things that I actually used in my labor and delivery bag and the recovery process like the healing process with the stitches and stuff like that because baby that's a whole other video so until next time guys i'll talk to you later bye